plumbing top out. Now remember, we talked about this the other day when we showed you the rough end, that we'd come back and show you what the top out looks like. This is actually the piping in the wall. They've already poured the slab, they've already put the studs up, the framing. I just kind of wanted to show you what it looks like before it's topped out, because we're gonna discuss the importance of a top out here in a little bit. So welcome to my kitchen. Well, okay, really this isn't my kitchen, but this is gonna be somebody's kitchen. As you see, we've got the drain pipe stubbed up right here. We've got a flex line here where they can run the water line in. And you've got lines over here to loop everything through it. That way the vent has a place to go out. Anyway, this will look a lot different when it's all completed. Now this is a fireplace and you normally wouldn't think of that as plumbing, but they're gonna run a gas line down and stub it into it. And we know that because you've got a switch on it so that literally somebody can just hit a switch and turn on their fireplace. I love fireplaces like this. Me, I've got the old gas line where you just have to light it and set the wood on fire. Nothing wrong with it, it puts off a lot of heat. But when this is all topped out, it's gonna look completely different. Now here we are coming in from the three car garage. This is probably gonna be your washing machine box and your main water supply line coming into the house. I love that they bring one water line in so we can put a valve here to shut everything off. Over on this side, we've got another three inch line it is probably gonna go up and go over and catch one of the bathrooms upstairs. So, as you see, man, the plumber did a pretty good job. Looks like just about everything hit the wall, except for a little insulation here. But, let's go check out one now that's topped out complete and see what that looks like. So guys, here we are on a bathroom that's already topped out. If you look at this, you've got your toilet flange already installed. You've got your cold water coming out back here behind it. You've got your vent pipe going up, turning over, and going up through the upstairs wall to go out through the roof. You've got a lavatory roughed in here. I like that they've got copper stub outs. We've seen some where they do the peck stub outs. I've got to tell you, I really like this. Then over on this side, you've got your washing machine box. You've got your clean out. You've got your dryer box in the wall. And I like that, that way you don't crush that dryer hose pushing it back. The hose actually goes in this cavity here in the box. You've got your hot and cold water coming in. It also catches this bathroom, comes up and goes different places. So, man, you saw it a while ago where there's just a piece of pipe stubbing up. Now they did put on an offset flange here and I don't necessarily like that, but they did it to try to get close to the 12 inch rough that they needed. Now, one thing I see I don't like too is this nail guard is really floated out because of all the spray foam inside the wall. So, you know, the sheet rocker is going to have to fight with that. He's not going to be real happy about it, but you know, it is what it is. This, this thing's still going to get built. So while we're still here in the garage and, and I do, I love this three car garage, two cars on this side, one on that side, but you've got a hose bib right here that runs down and goes out right here at the side front of the house. Now, man, it's round all the way across the garage and it's caught somewhere way over there but I love the fact that they've got a hose bib here close to the front of the house where when you're out washing your cars or anything like that, it's really easy to get to. So anyway, just wanted to point that out. Now, it looks like this is a stub out for a tankless water heater. You've got hot and cold, red and white. You've got a condensate drain right here. You've got a gas line here. And I don't see the power yet, but you know, I'm sure that there's gonna be power here somewhere. Oh, and you've got power right over here on the sidewall. So to me, it makes it look like this is where they're gonna put the tankless water heater. You got a big sleeve there to run the vent through. So great spot for it out here in the garage. It's gonna be up on the wall. It's not gonna take up any floor space. And even if you do pull a car in here all the way up in this third part of the three car garage, it's never gonna interfere with this. So good spot and good installation point for it. One other thing is if this is where the cold water comes into the house. What I would have done maybe a little bit different is bring the cold water in instead of over at the restroom. I'd have brought it in here and looped up and gone back down. That way, if they wanted to put in a whole house water filtration system, this would have been a great spot for that too. Okay, so here we are. The gas is ran to the fireplace. Now, you've got a gas control valve over here. So if there's ever a problem with the fireplace and you need to work on it, you can actually shut the gas off here. And the cool thing about these, they've got a wall switch here. So whenever you wanna turn the fireplace on, literally it's like a light bulb. You hit the switch, it opens up the gas control valve, 
it flows up through the logs. It has an igniter that lights. And man, in just a few minutes, you're putting heat off into this big, beautiful living room. Now, welcome back to my kitchen. Well, it looks a little bit different now. You've actually got the drain line down here. You've got two cleanouts, and you have a loop vent. So this is all set up here. They've got also, as you see, the water lines were brought up in that flexible conduit that we showed a while ago. It comes up. You've got two hots, one for your dishwasher, one for your sink, and you got your cold on this side. And then over on this side, there's your vent going up through the roof and your hot and cold water lines coming down that loop up to catch your sink. And another thing, you can tell you're gonna have a gas range here. They've got a three quarter inch drop, a half inch line coming out. This is the valve and I love this because your gas stop is not right under your sink. You've got it over here. Now literally all you have to do is come out, put a flex connector on, go right up into the regulator. That way this thing is really ready to go. And you've got your ice maker box. Now this is great, and I love this big area. This could be a sub-zero, maybe a refridge and a freezer. You've got a big enough area here that it would be really easy to do something good in here, and you've got the ice maker box there to go ahead and have water for whatever you need. Now, these are the flashings for the roof, and you can see that they're angled so that when you lay it down on the tilted roof, the pipe can still go up through here. This will do inch and a half, two inch, and three inch. And I don't know if you can cut this one out for a four or not, but the plumbers leave these for the roofers. The roofers slide this down over the pipe, then they put the roof in around it. That way this seals off the pipe where water doesn't come in. And when it rains, you never get water seeping in around the pipe getting into your attic or into your walls or anything like that. So right here, you've got your tub and shower. One thing I love about it is how tall the shower head is roughed in. I hate when I see plumbers put them in at like six foot thinking that's gonna be tall enough, but then by the time you put in a shower head and it turns down, literally your shower head's right down here in your face. I love this, it's a steel tub already installed. The Water line for the tub spout is copper. It's anchored down tight. You've got pegs come in. You've got the valve screwed into the wall. And it's a mowing valve. We can see that by the top cartridge that it is. But it's screwed into the wall where everything's secure. Nothing moves. You've got pecs going up to the drop air dale. And like I said, it stubs out high enough. There's not many people that are going to have a problem taking a shower in here. Then your bathroom. You see the toilet flange already down. You've got your lavatory roughed in over there. Again, they've got copper stub outs for everything, which to me makes it where the homeowner should never have a problem. Now, here we are in the master bath. This, of course, is going to be the, the big Roman tub. You've got a shower over here that the shower pan's not in yet. Uh, valve's not in yet, so you know, the valve is in. Uh, it's hit under the insulation. Again, You've got okay height on this one. I had to put it in a little bit higher, but you've got your tub, you've got your shower. You've got the toilet room back over here, which is kind of isolated by itself with the door on it. And then you've got his and her lavatories. So I love this that way. She's got plenty of room. He's got plenty of room and man, it's just, it makes for a nice, well-rounded out master bathroom. So remember the lines that I was telling you about that catches the upstairs bathrooms? This is the three inch line. Now they had to offset it over because this is where the drain needed to be for the lavatory. But it comes up, turns out, and you can tell by looking up, it catches a toilet, a lavatory, probably a, a tub and shower, a tub or shower. So, you know, this catches the bathroom up here. And then there's another line right over there that catches the upstairs bathroom on that side. So. We've pretty much looked at everything down here except for maybe a few hose bibs, but let's run upstairs and check out the upstairs bathroom real quick. So as you see, we're in the bathroom again. You got your lavatory over there, your tub right there, and well, I'm standing on the toilet in a way. But I like the way they've got everything roughed in. Everything is anchored down really secure. 
again, you've got plenty of height here. So when that shower head comes out and turns down, it's still gonna be above your head. But this is one upstairs bathroom up above the garage where that line came across. And then you've got another one over here that's roughed in from the other side. So well thought out, well laid out, and the top out, you know, the vents all go through the roof, doing everything like they're supposed to do. The flashings were left under for the roofers. Looks like a pretty good top out. Okay, one thing I want you to notice is this extra drain line right here. And what it is, you can see it goes up. This goes up and catches the condensation drain off of one of the AC units. And it'll tie in here and catch in the lavatory drain above the P-trap. So again, good rough end, everything is nice and secure. You've got it high enough that you're gonna be able to tie it in. It's not in the way of the water lines or the drain. But a lot of people always wonder, what's this extra drain line for? Or what's this extra line for under the lavatory? And that's exactly what it is, condensation for the air conditioning units upstairs. So welcome back to the last bathroom. And, and this one's a smaller one, but it looks like it's an individual bathroom for an individual bedroom where the other one had two lavatories and it's kind of a Jack and Jill in between two different bathrooms. But you've got your toilet right here. You've got your tub and shower. Shower head roughed in at a good height. You've got a lavatory over here with another condensate drain for the air conditioner. On the other side, it needs to be anchored down. It looks like somebody knocked it loose or pulled it loose. But, and this is a good rough end. Everything looks good. Everything's nice, true, square, and plumb. And it really looks like they did a pretty good job. Now, one thing I want to point out is the steel plate down here. Now, what this for is for nail guards. And this is to make sure that no sheetrock or anybody sticks a nail in and it goes through the water line. And this is something that's required and really, man, it's great for the homeowners. Say there's a water line going in the wall up above and it comes across and you don't know it and you stick a nail or screw in to hang a picture, man, then you've got a flood on your hands. So I love that the nail guards are required and I love that they use them as much as they do. So, what do you think about the top out? Are there anything that you've seen that you do a little bit different? Got to tell you, I think these plumbers really did a good job. And I hope that you learned something about what a top out is and why it's important. Everything has to be in the wall done right because all your sewer system, all your water lines, all your gas, it all ties together eventually. Sewer, water, and gas, swag. The vent goes out the roof to make sure you have atmospheric pressure balance in your P-traps so they don't dry out, and that keeps the sewer gas smells from coming back into your house. Anyway, if you love this video, you're definitely gonna love this one.